I know that that is a big part of yeah. what made you such a star. Oh, uh, oh, bless you. Thank you. But and then the other one was the other one was. <laughs> I'm getting so much love. We're gonna stop for a second because <laughs> this one is so distracting. Roxy. Everybody has a story. Remember, do things that make you smile. Hi, I'm Monique Manon. Now, tell me your story. Never ever let life hold you down. Tell me your story. Don't worry, be happy down upside. Hi there. Welcome to Tell Me Your Story with Monique Manon. This is the first episode. I'm so excited. This has been at over a decade that I wanted to do this. Uh, Elan Carter-Price is going to interview me. And I started this show. It started out that I wanted to do uh, uh, honor to dancers, uh, honor to dancers that I looked up to, that, that inspired me. And they were not getting the sunlight, the, the sunshine uh, 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 on them. So I, this is why... I start doing this and, and also because I am a health and wellness advocate and I start getting testimonial stories, just talking to people. I, I find that everyone has a story. So that's why the show, Tell Me Your Story with Monique Manon. And it's, it's, it's for, it's for inspiration. It's hope. It's love. And here's my Coco, my darling Coco. <laughs> and, uh, I hope you enjoy it and, Hi, Elon. Hi, I'm so excited. <laughs> oh, my gosh. This is, a, this is an honor. I get to interview you because I know this is your, you, this is what you do. But this woman right here is one of the people that I looked up to in the business. You know, whenever I would see her, you know, she was so busy working when I began in the industry that if I couldn't get the job, I mean, if she couldn't get the job, you, I would get the job. <laughs> if I'd have to wear the same hair. But I want you to tell me your story. I want to know, and people don't know this, you will know because you've got a very famous uh, uh, scene that you have on, on a show that we will talk about. But tell me a story. Where are you from? Okay, I'm from, uh, I was born in Suriname, South America, and um, raised in the Netherlands, and then moved by myself to New York, and then L.A. So for me, the journey started, I started dancing at four years old in, in, uh, in Suriname with Kera Samdam is her name. And then my parents got divorced. And my mom, Lily, divorce was final at 12 o'clock. Got on the plane 6 o'clock to the Netherlands because all her family was there. Mm -hmm. And then we moved. And uh, thank goodness, Kera Samdam moved to the Netherlands as well. So at 6 years old, I, took, I went back to dance class. And I asked my mom, right, because it was interesting. I was like, Mom, where did I get it from to start dancing? What, did, did you want that for me? She was like, no, you were always dancing. You were always dancing. And you asked at four years old that you wanted to go to dance class. And so it's always been in me. And then at six years old, uh, I, I continued to take my dance class. But at 12 years old, when I got a, a, a scholarship at a youth uh, ballet academy in the Netherlands, uh, my mom looked at me. She said, you know what that means if you do this, right? That means no more playing outside. That means you have no free time for yourself. That's it. She said, nope, I'm, I'm fine with that. I want to do this. Because I had to take a bus by myself at 12 years old to go 30 minutes away from my small town wow. to the city called Arnhem and to take my, my dance class there. And, uh, and I, was, I wanted it. You want it. I wanted it. And that's it starts at a young age. You know that's what you felt like you wanted to do. I knew it. So I want to know how you ended up in New York. That's what made you, your career just shoosh. <laughs> yeah. So I, at the dance academy mm -hmm. that I was at, uh, they had a dance competition. And, you know, they had the, the ballet point shoe divas mm -hmm. and all that stuff. And I'm like, okay, I'm not that great with that yet. So I did Tina Turner, Proud Mary, Rolling. And me and the ballet dancer, one ballet dancer, we shared first prize. And the... The, the, the dance teacher, the master, the, the, the dance master, he was like, now that's performing. And that's when I knew this is what I want to do. Mm -hmm. I want to perform. 
and because it felt so good. Mm -hmm. It felt so good. And then the second time was like uh, four years later. I won a four, three and a half years later. I won a dance competition for Sad Night Fever dance competition. Oh, you did! Yes, oh, did. that I, that's cool. <laughs> I danced on. Uh, Disco Inferno. Oh. Burn, baby, burn. <laughs> Disco Inferno. They don't want us to see. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, and the prize was a trip to New York. So I was on the age of my dance teacher, Benjamin Felix Dahl. He came uh, to New York with my dance partner, and he, mm -hmm. he uh, went with us. And I saw Alvin Ailey perform. <gasps> I oh. saw Sarita Allen, Maxine Sherman, Ma uh, uh, um, Marilyn Banks, uh, uh, Gary DeLoach, and on and on and on. And I was just like, OMG, this is it. I'm mm -hmm. so, oh. And then I saw uh, uh, West Side Story, Debbie Allen. Oh, oh, my goodness. And then I saw uh, Bob Fosse's dancing. Oh, I was like, okay, I must. And I saw um, uh, Dreamgirls. And I fell in love with Loretta Devine because mm -hmm. she was just everything. I oh, got a shout out to I love baby. that voice. Love she, oh, she's my favorite. And so you came up also in a time where there were the greats. Yes. You know, you go to the Alvin Ailey, the, the, the Debbie Allens. I mean, that's when there was like really a big thing. Right, so that right. was perfect timing. And you're such a performer. Yes. You know? A lot of times, you know, you walk into a room and you go in for an audition. It's one thing to be able to go in and do the lines and be good. But when that person pops is when they're just a performer and they stand yeah. out. And that's just, you're still like that. And, and, you, and you know what? And, and, and let's be completely transparent. As there is hundreds, hundreds of dancers out there that mm -hmm. are much better dancers than me. Technically better. Higher legs, whatever. I'm not the best dancer out there. There's tons. But you gave them something. But I got the performance. Right. You I, gave, you yeah. got the performance. And yeah. that's what they want to see. And, Showmanship. Too. And, and that's what I want to say to the young dancers out there. It's like, yes, get the technique. Yes. Work on your, work on your lines. Work on, on, on the pirouettes. Mm -hmm. Work on all that. Work on the extension. And once you got that down, then perform. Work on enjoying it, yes. really loving it. Because if you love it, if you enjoy it, the people watching you mm -hmm. are loving it and enjoying it. So what was your first gig that made you really know that you made it? Oh, easy. Prince. I, I remember that <laughs> video. Look, but you know what? In all honesty, I really didn't until he passed away, to tell you the truth. Really? But no, because I never talked about it. I still have friends that didn't find out until they saw an interview. They were like, that was you? There was only one friend of mine from the Netherlands that called me. She said, I know those legs anywhere. Those are your legs. I knew right away. See? I always tell everyone, that's my friend. That's my friend doing that. But, but most people didn't. Really? They did not know. No, they didn't know. And a lot of people didn't find out until um, he passed away. They were like, that was you. That well, was that, that's why you did the Tina Turner, because you got those legs. <laughs> You know, it was See? Just so energetic. It's I know, just, I know I, I mean. but you have the same you know, those beautiful <laughs> legs. So, what advice would you give someone? I, I know that you've done some. Let's let's actually go into the coming to America scene. Yeah, I want to work in videos, but really, I want to be my own star in the videos because I want to become a pop singer and a rock singer and write my own songs, produce my own songs, and then I want to try an actress because people tell me how talented I am. I'm a natural and stuff like that. So then I'm going to write my own stories and direct my own stories and you know and produce the movies. I'm doing. Okay, so I have a great story for that one because. I need, I want to go back to, because you remember when we were, you know, in the midst of it all, yeah. there was, I was, I knew already young, from young on that, okay, I cannot just do dance. Mm -hmm. I got to do, have additional stream of income, mm -hmm. right? So that's when I started modeling and that's, you know, going to Apple boxes to make me look taller. And that's when I also start acting because it was like, okay, if I don't do one gig, I do another, I do another. So they have a saying in, in, in Los Angeles, right? Oh, dancer, actress, model, whatever. <laughs> right? Yes. Right? Multi. Look, even I wasn't a dancer. But I, but I was <laughs> really else? doing it. Right. Was, you did everything. I was really working. So anyway, so I wind up with William Morris Agency. Even though, because I was working a lot commercially as well, and William Morris was not the strongest commercial agent, but I picked him because they had an the instant, the instant name. respect. Yes. Because, you know, you would meet someone and you go like, oh, mm -hmm, yeah, dancer, actress, model, whatever. Yes. Who's your agent? Yes. And every single time I go, William Morris. Oh, uh -huh. oh, you're real. I'm like, but it's, I don't understand for the life of me what it is about that, that, 
the women just didn't get the respect. Mm-hmm. When it's a woman, when a guy is doing it, some trip, you know, doing mm-hmm. two, three things, I was like, oh, he's badass. Mm-hmm. But when a woman does it, model, actress, dancer, whatever, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. It's like, <laughs> whatever. And I really, I, I really didn't, I do not like that. But what you did have and what they did not know is you were a professional dancer. You had the training. You right. had the background. That's right. You know, that's, right. that's what they did not know that made you different from everyone else. That's right. Why you stood out. But it didn't matter to them. Yeah. It was still, they still had that label out there and I, it was ridiculous. It was so absurd. That's why I'm so happy with all those shows, those dance yeah. shows that are out there right now. Giving the respect to the mm-hmm. dancers, to the choreographers. You know what I mean? That is so deserved. And uh, even so, you think you can, well, no, no, uh, Dancing with the Stars. Finally, that, yes. this, this star saying like, oh my goodness, I had no idea. It was so hard. It's yes. so hard. Yes. Finally giving the respect. And dancers finally getting the recognition that they're athletes. Mm-hmm. They're not fluff. Oh, you are athletes. Yes. That's what you are. Absolutely. That's why you can see by the legs, five, the body structure. Five classes a day, baby. Yes. And I would walk because um, I had scholarship with uh, Jeffrey Ballet, Martha Graham, and Alvin Ailey at the same time. Mm-hmm. And those were in a triangle in New York. And I would walk to all of them. Jeffrey was on 18th Street, uh, 8th Avenue. Ailey was on 50th Street and, and 7th and 8th, 7th and Broadway. Graham was in 63rd Street and uh, uh, Lexington and 3rd, if I'm not mistaken. And I would walk. Girl, I was like this. <laughs> I was like this. <laughs> Anytime you're dancing. <laughs> yeah. So what made you get back to, what made you come out to L.A. then? Because oh, you were dancing. Oh, this is a great story. So, and um, I was uh, touring in Israel with Donnie McHale. I was a lead in the show. And I came back to New York and they were on their eighth callback for the movie Course Line. With Michael Douglas. Mm-hmm. You know, they were shooting the movie version of the Broadway show, Chorus Line. And I was like, oh my goodness, if I would have been here, I would have been at that callback. I, you know, I'm going. F it, I'm going. So I went. And you know, the, in New York, the way it is, it's like they have a table blocking mm-hmm. that door. Yep. And the woman has to list, the woman or the man has to list. And if you're not on the list, they won't let you in. Right. So I, but I believed in my heart and my soul and every pore of my being that I'm supposed to be in that room. Mm -hmm. And she was like, hi, what's your name? I said, Monique Manon. And she was like, (laughs) but you're not on the list. (laughs) And I'm like, but I should be. And I looked her right in the eyes and she was like, oh, okay, go right ahead. Because you were confident. Yes. And that just goes back to what we were saying. We say, if you believe in yourself, I don't care what you do. Right. You believe in yourself. You can do what you want to do. That's right. You know? That's right. And, and, And Jeffrey Hornaday. Jeffrey Hornaday, because he's a choreographer, right? Mm-hmm. And he could have easily said, wait a minute, I didn't call you back. He didn't say anything. No, but he came after I was finished. He came out of the room. And you know, we as dancers, we beat us up. Well, I, I do. I always focus on the mistake I made, mm-hmm. right? I focus on the mistake. And I was sitting there going, like, oh, man, I messed this up, messed this up. And he comes up and goes, like, you are fantastic. And I was like, yeah, but he was like, no, no, you, no, stop. So, yeah, take the compliment take the and just compliment. run with it, right? Yeah, take the compliment, <laughs> right. So Jeffrey Hornaday. Oh, yes. And, and so half the cast was from uh, Los Angeles. And oh my God, but I got to tell you about that, that chorus line, because Michael Jackson would come on the balcony and watch us dance. Wow. Uh, you know, it was the, who was, That's who was cool. by. It was so cool. And then we would go in the rotunda, they call it. It was like literally when you, because it was a real Broadway uh, theater that we did it in. That this is where people go get the wine and the, you know, blah, 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 big round open space. So they just put the dances in there. But boy, the party was in the rotunda. And <laughs> the party. I can imagine back oh, in the day. Candy <laughs> so Alexander, much fun. Candy oh. Alexander showed us how she auditioned. She said, yes, I go right up to the table and ask first on. On the table, I said, trust me. You already remember did that. Me? That's how you got in. That's how you got in the court slide. <laughs> no, but I wouldn't even go to the table. Right. <laughs> right. No, I know that, but still, you, you were but, confident. You knew. You got in and there. Then, and, then, and then it was uh, uh, the dancers from, from Solid Gold. They would do this, the Solid Gold number. Da, 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 da. <laughs> oh, it was, we had so much Aww. fun. It was so, it was Broadway divas on, on the, you know, in that movie. It was so much they would do their numbers of their shows it was fan it was fantastic well i want to know how you got coming to america oh i auditioned for it well i know that but you you were you already back in la no no i was in la so after the course line i called 
Uh, they told me, half the cast told me, go to L.A. Uh -huh. And they said, you got to call Julie McDonald, who is a, who is a, young, who is a young lady that started the first dance agent. Okay. So I called her up and I said, hey, it's Monique. I, you know, I tell, they tell me that I need to call you. She said, come, I'll pick you up. She picked me up. I stayed at her house for a couple of days. And then I, uh, one of the other dancers from the chorus line, uh, Penny, mm -hmm. Penny went and got an apartment and I shared with her and until her husband, uh, came to town like six months later, who was an actor. And, but it was, gave me enough time to find, uh, find my way around and my place. And, uh, uh um, y y the acting started for me, my first role. So I have to tell the transition because I was doing a dance job. And the dance, dance job was a movie called Rented Lips. It was Robert Downey Jr. was a star. His dad was a director. Mm -hmm. And we were just treated like cattle. Mm -hmm. And it's not just that job. It's just all around all the time. The right. dancers just got treated with no respect. Right. Right. right? right. Can we have the dancers, please? No individual name. You didn't get a room like you get wow. as an actor. You just get put in a big space, no chairs a lot of times, and work it out. Right? So then I did one line in a movie. I had a trailer with my name on the door. Uh, and then it was like, boom, boom, boom. Um, Miss Manon, would you like some tea? Miss Manon, can I get you anything? I'm like, ooh, I like this Miss Manon. <laughs> I did. I can get used to this. I love it. Because this. you got the respect that you've been wanting. Yes. Yeah. And, and the thing is like, but I did not put the work in for actor. Like so you did with the, with the dancing. dancing. So it, it just was like, I would get the jobs like that. Right. But, but you know, when you get the jobs and then you're just like, oh God, I don't know what I'm doing. I, yeah. you know, then you feel like, oh, I know, you I feel know. like you should, I'm going to be found out any minute yeah. and I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Well, that's what it goes back to what you were saying, an actor, dancer, whatever. No, whatever. Right? <laughs> and then so I realized, that, you know, so most of the jobs that I got in the beginning was because of my personality. Yeah. I remember I went to one audition and they said, do you have a monologue? I didn't even know, have a monologue. I yeah. didn't know that you're supposed to have a monologue. So I did a joke. I had them in stitches laughing and they were like, you are hilarious. <laughs> so <laughs> that's basically how that was happening in the beginning because it was only one line, a couple mm. of lines, you know what I mean? And then when I auditioned, and then I went through the problem of that I have the accent. They don't know what to do with the accent. You know, you could see them sitting there going like, oh, God, where is she from? Where is she from? And they couldn't get it out fast enough. Mm -hmm. So I became such a horrible auditioner for acting jobs because I got in my head. Like, yes. you know, I was like, don't, don't pro pronounce like. the words. Yes. Don't, don't let them ask you where you're from. Or, or be more black. <laughs> <laughs> How many times have you heard that yeah, one? Right. And I don't have the accent. Right. But and your accent worked in that scene and yeah. coming to America. Well, that's what, you know, that, that's what. Because it's so memorable. Well, well that's, the, the, that's why, I'm sorry, I'm like, I'm so excited. That's why um, John Landis really wanted me for The Princess. Uh -huh. And he was fighting for me, and, uh, and that's how I got the part, because he was like, okay, I'm sorry, I really wanted you for that, mm -hmm. didn't work out, but here is the boring girl. <laughs> but still, the, even when you see the scenes, and, the, and when they you know, go through all the girls, yeah. I was like, oh, there's no name? I get so <laughs> excited, because your accent, everyone always remember, you know, remembers you, so yeah. it did work. It did work for yeah, that particular yeah. stuff, but I know you've done so many things. I mean, we, you have a list that just goes on and on, but then you also were smart. You were a businesswoman at a young age. You were investing in property. I remember that yeah. clearly. You were buying your own homes. You took that money and said, hey, you know, what advice do you have with people that make money at a young age? Because I remember someone saying to me, you know, invest now. It's not going to always be there. That's right. And you don't realize that because you don't realize you're going to get older. That's right. And those jobs are going to slow down. That's right. So there's always new, younger, fresher faces. And then they're used to seeing. So what advice do you give to everyone as far as um, when they do make money? Because that's what you save, do. Save, yes. save, save, save. Always save. No, you know, uh, there's this financial guru. She has always said, pay yourself 20% first in your, in your account. Mm -hmm. I did more than that because I was determined. I was determined to have my own place. Mm -hmm. And um, so I literally would go to rehearsal and bring lunch. People would go to lunch and buy their lunches, buy their this. Or I would bring my lunch because mm -hmm. I wanted to save money. I wanted to save, save, save so I can buy my place. So I bought a, my condo in, uh, in Chorus Line in um, Culp City when, uh, when I was 19, 20 years old. Yeah. I mean, and uh, um, because it was important to me to yeah. have something substantial, mm -hmm. you know, to show 
I did the work and, it, you know. And you have something for it. And, and that was part of the respect. Right. Because when people know, like, you're really a legitimate person in this industry because you have something to show for it. That's right. You know, so that made a big, you know, difference. And the thing is, like, because I know a lot of people that made a lot more money than me, have done a lot more job, but, but they, they just weren't, they weren't smart with their yeah. money. And it's like, and that's one lesson what I want to teach you. It's like, definitely save your money because... <laughs> You're going to be hot and then you're going to be not yeah. happened, happened to me. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's just the way it is. It's yeah. like, you're not always going to be on top. You're not always going to be the it girl, yeah. you know? So make sure that you take care of that rainy day that you protect and protect yourself. Yes. Cause no one else going to do it for you. So what are you doing now? Cause I know that you're really into the health thing. And, oh know, my you... goodness. Yeah. Cause I got sick for three years and I was, yeah. I went on this journey of trying to find a solution. It turned out that it was out of control eczema. And I went up trying to find a solution. And I was like, try this, try it. I was like, yes, 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 yes. And, you know, even wind up in the hospital and they put steroids into my drip system, send me home with a pill supply, a 10-day pill supply of steroids and steroids cream. And that was the answer. And so I got introduced to a, a natural science, changed my life. And so I have become, you know, an advocate for it to, let, to introduce it to people, to let people know there is another way. There's a way that is healthy that can help your body heal itself, right? Yeah. And I know you do the biohacking. That's it. That's the That's biohacking. The bio For people world. that don't know, they don't know it's called biohacking. And yeah. you are, you've are you been doing this. You've done phenomenal with it. Yeah. I, you know, well, you know, I, 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 I've been taking this since 2012. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm telling you, and, and, you know, the great thing about it is, like, I see people all the time that go, like, you haven't changed. You haven't changed. I said, buy a hacking baby. <laughs> <laughs> buy a hacking I baby. I haven't changed your look. I look exactly the same. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Right, I right. love it. I right. love it because it really is a way that you can reverse the aging process yeah. naturally. Yes. Really. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, I know you have young kids still, yeah. so you have to keep up with them. Yes. My, so, do- my, my, my mini me. Your mini uh, me. My, my son, thank goodness, he's, um, you know, he's uh, out of college. He played football in college. Mm-hmm. And now he's working uh, in the banking industry. And then my daughter is in high school and she, she doesn't want to follow in my footstep at all. She went to dance classes for a couple of years. Finally, she's like, eh, not for me. I'm not feeling it. <laughs> she's like, I'm, no, I'm done. And I'm, you know, and I'm one of those parents. I'm like, I'm not forcing anything. I want yeah. her to find her own way, find her own voice. Mm-hmm. And she loves singing. She loves, she does like, act, she does love acting, but she loves volleyball right now. Mm-hmm. Volleyball is her thing right now. Oh, so. She can get a scholarship in volleyball. Yeah, right? It's in school she wants. Right? And you know, you know, there's a great story about that because, Back to, because I am such a perfectionist. Remember I told you a story with Jeff, Jeffrey Hornaday when he came outside and gave me a compliment and I'm breaking myself down because I'm a perfectionist and my poor child inherited that. So she started playing, but she was so afraid to make a mistake, so afraid that it, that it stifled her. Mm-hmm. And the same thing that I went through with acting auditions, so afraid because you can make so many different yes. choices. Yes. And so I was so afraid to make the wrong choice and then, uh, you know, the accent not to come out. So I was watching more than really being in the moment, right. which is supposed to be with acting. But that poor child, same thing with her volleyball. And then all of a sudden we were in, in the Netherlands over the summer and she was watching the Olympics, the volleyball in the Olympics. Mm-hmm. And she was like, oh, the top of the game, they make mistakes. Yes. Oh, She's that's having, how we learn. That's how you learn. Yes. She's having a blast now. Oh, good. She's having a blast. That's so it good. was a huge aha moment for her. And, and it's the social media for the kids. Right. And, you know, they don't understand because what you see on there, they've t- taken a c- gazillion pictures, you right. know, before right. they've got to that point and whatever. Got retouched. Doing. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah everything. Yeah. So they yeah. don't know that's all tweaking and right. that's just only a part of it. Well, I, this has been such a joy and you, your career has been phenomenal. And so anyone that knows Monique and you know that that Prince video, kiss and her those legs. Yes, thank you. Oh, amazing. And, and you know, you guys out there, go after your dreams. You know, here I was a young girl and, you know, I had my, my, my friends, my, my, my friends told my mom, my dancer's friend told the parents called my mom. Who does Monique think she is? You know, there's so many dancers in New York. Then, you know, she's wasting her time, blah, 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 blah. And it scared my mom. And my yeah. mom was like, she was trying to scare me. And she was like, Monique, 
you, you, I'm not going to support you, you know, so you get back it, here. Yeah. And I was like, no, mom, this is what I have to do. I was staying at the Vanderbilt YMCA, 227 East 47th Street. And this manager took me under her wing. She Aww. gave me a job as the hospitality desk. It's just one person. One it just person. takes one person yeah. to change your life. Because I call those people non-well-wishers. Yes. You don't need the non-well-wishers. Yeah. No, it doesn't matter what they think you you are not yeah. capable of doing or what you won't be successful. Right. You won't know until you get out there and try. That's right. And that's why, you know, I, my mom, my mm-hmm. mom is my hero. Mm-hmm. My hero, my shero. She is, you know, she's the rock. Cause she really took care of four kids by herself with wow. no help. And she did it all by herself. And she was so supportive. Yeah. She was so supportive. Like for me to have been in, uh, uh, in New York, at that young age, eventually she realized I was serious. At that time, a, a, it was guilders. That time it took four guilders to get one dollar. So my mom was sending me almost four thousand dollars for me to get four thousand wow. guilders for me to get one thousand dollars every month. Wow. That's my mom. And she had three other kids to raise. And she had other kids to raise. Wow. My mom is phenomenal. Phenomenal phenomenal, phenomenal. I'm completely always indebted to her because she always did whatever it took. She's that woman, right? When the money was tight, she was like, ah, I don't have it for the, for the outfit. But mom, I need a book. Oh, yeah, here you yeah. go. She will find that <laughs> she money. Find she it. will find that money <laughs> if it comes to you growing yes. as, an, uh, you know, as a person. Education, you know, mm-hmm. she's all about that. So yeah. I'm mom. Thank you. To all the moms. <laughs> also too she's always yeah. been encouraging so she is yes. my, she is all that she definitely so when your child wants to pursue something support them you know yes. it's 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 important because that support is everything and it, it emotionally is so important for them to grow i mean we've lived our lives we've done what we wanted That's to right. what makes us happy support them yeah you know let let them find their own way what mm-hmm. what makes them smile mm-hmm. because you see a lot of people that are in professions that they realize, wait a minute, I went to college for all, all those years for this, but this is not making me smile. Yes. I'm not happy with yes. this. You know, so make sure that this is what you want. Because if you do choose that specific thing that you want to pursue, make sure that you truly love it and that you're willing to sacrifice, make sacrifices, yes. and work your toots off. Mm-hmm. Work your tootsie off. Really, it takes that. It's not, you, there's no magic wand. To make your dream come into reality, you got to do the work. You got to do the work. That's the only way you're going to be good. Because look, at, there's so many people in the world. Yeah. Why that person, someone's going to pay attention to you right. out of all these other people. Right. Because you have to be so good at what you do. So they go, wow, that's, that's amazing. Like you stood out. What? Oh, I got a great story about that. So when I, was, when I was a youth in the youth program at the Dance Academy, there was this young lady, right? She was not the typical dancer's body. She was, you know, a little bigger. And the teacher would pick on her, pick on her, pick on her, pick on her. We had summer vacation. Do you know that girl came back, slimmed down, danced circle around all of us. And that was a huge learning lesson. So when I started at Alvin Ailey uh, on scholarship and I was like, okay, who's the best one in here? You. Okay, I got to pass you up. Otherwise, yes. you're going to get the job. Yes. Right? Yeah. So you do have that, have that. The drive in you yes. to go after your dream, mm-hmm. right? To be the best so right. you can stand out. Right. And I have to also thank a couple of other people like uh, Dolores Brown. When I went to Ailey, uh, Dolores Brown was the scholarship director. And I walked up to her and said, hi, my name is Monique. I want to dance with you. And she was like, she, she's a firecracker. <laughs> she didn't even know how to respond. She was like speechless. She was like, and then the only thing that she could say, well, do we want you? <laughs> and I was like, yes, I think yes. so. <laughs> and made, it made her pay attention. Right. And then Denise Jefferson, Elio Pomare, Frank Hatchett. So we all got a people that, you know, that, that, that raised you up, mm-hmm. right? You, you just don't do that by yourself. Yeah. I had casting directors like Shamin Bernard, Monica Swan. When I remember when I was in a casting session for Shamin Bernard, and I'm shaking, I'm shaking because I was so, I'm so afraid of auditions, yeah. right? For, yeah. for acting. Mm-hmm. And she was like, Monique, sweetheart, sit down. Yeah. Sit down. Breathe. Mm-hmm. So there's, there's still angels out there that want the best for you. They want the best. They, they want, want you to do well. You, and they when, they, want, when yeah. they want you, they 
coach you to do right. well, you right. know? Right. Yeah. Jackie Burge, casting Jackie, yeah, Jackie Burge. Her, yeah. She did, she cast uh, uh, Coming to America. Oh. And so she also felt bad for me that what happened with the princess from mm-hmm. Coming to America. So she gave me a job. So it was uh, um, um, Clayton, uh, that comedian. Remember? Oh, I ah, forget about it. What's his name? He oh. had the Vegas run. Uh, I can't remember. Um, okay, anyway, it was Fort Failing, and he was the lead in it. And and uh, uh, she called in. They knew they needed, you know, every different race. They needed one, right? Mm-hmm. So she called me the only woman of color because she knew they had to hire a woman of yes, color, right? Yeah. And so, so she was like, you know, this is it. This is your choices. That <laughs> so she basically forced them to, to, to hire yeah. me. Right, right. So she looked out for me and then some. It's, and it's quite, and I'm sorry, some of you that I forgot your name, but there's, but there's so many people that helped me up yeah. on the way. And I'm, I'm in major, major gratitude. But what makes you happy? What makes me smile? What makes you smile? This, I was going to say what makes you happy. Then what makes you smile? Well, man, well <laughs> this makes me happy. This you know, makes you, you know, being in your company. And oh, I know we're going to go out to dinner. We're going to eat. Dinner, dinner. <laughs> and and uh, what makes me smile is my kids, my, yeah. my, my darling Coco, my husband. You know, uh, I'm, I'm in major gratitude. Major, yes. major, major gratitude. It's like 2020 really put a lot of things in perspective. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I... A lot of heartbreaks. Yeah. A lot of people like yourself, you know, you, you, dealt, you went through uh, the cancer process. Mm-hmm. Thank goodness you've had yes, you. Hallelujah. Yes. And, <laughs> um, and, and, you know, and I've, I've lost quite a lot of people through cancer mm-hmm. and or whatever. And then COVID, you know, so many people dealing with people losing their livelihood, people losing homes, yes. their businesses. I was just like, oh, gosh. Ah. Mm. So I ran away and, and went to Utah for four months mm-hmm. and, and just healed my heart. Because yeah. it was just, it just I, I, it was, even though it wasn't happening to me, but it was just like my heart was just yeah. pouring out to, every, you know, to all that was dealing with this nonsense. And uh, so my wish for the world, I, I, you know, my prayer every night is, please, God, heal the world. Heal the world. Yes. And just so we have to rejuvenate everything, you know, get a regeneration of just our being, you know, even though it may not be happening directly to us, just the people around us. It's just we have to get back to caring for each other. And I think that's what that's what we're we're talking about as far as being just smiling, smiling and enjoying each other because that's healing. That's healing. Right. And, you know, and my my thing about do things that make you smile, it's really about taking care of yourself. Self-care, because do things that make you smile. It's a form of self-care because uh, only eat what you love, what makes you smile. Only be in the company, what makes you smile. Only be around, surrounded by the people that make you smile or the surroundings, you know, because if it doesn't make you smile, what is the point? Yes, but I eat too much, too many things that make oh, me we, smile. Well, we both and I, <laughs> we both. So we eat a lot so, of things. So we my always wish smile. for both of us is balance with eating. Yes. Don't give it up, but balance. Because we dance after we eat. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's phenomenal. Yes. And this has been such a great story and such a great opportunity. And I'm. This is Monique's story. <laughs> yes. Yes. Do Remember, you? like it, subscribe, bell. So you can be notified for the next show. I have some great guests coming up. Ilan is one of my guests. Her story is amazing. I have Bill Duke coming, uh, uh, Robert Townsend, John Sally Spider, four-time NBA champion. Unheard of. He's the only one I think has done it that has four, uh, three different champions with three different, four rings with three different teams. Uh, uh, so uh, I have this amazing singer that my daughter is obsessed with, Morissette from the Philippines. So it's all about lifting those talented people up and give them the credit where their credit is due and put some sunshine on them and introducing them to you. So, you know, yeah, yeah, I did not know that you're going to be so surprised about stories about uh, all those people that you did not know. And it's exciting. It's so I'm so happy about that. Me too. This has been fun. Remember, (laughs) do things that make you smile and see you on the next one. Bye. Never ever let life hold you down. Don't worry, be happy, down upside frown. Motivation, inspiration, up living and giving. Inspiration.
what's your motivation? It's your life, so keep living. Never ever let life hold you down. Tell me your story. Don't worry, be happy, down, upside, frown. Tell me your story. Motivation, inspiration, upliving and giving. Tell me your story. Inspiration, motivation, it's your life, so keep living. Young black girl, on, in a big city.